Hey guys, welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at the 2020 presidential election and doing an update on our prediction after many different events have happened across the nation that have truly impacted this presidential election. Before we get started, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. So let's get started. So at this point in time, this election is really being shaped by some of the events we have recently had. And since early voting has started to um, begun, begin nationwide in a lot of states, we're going to start seeing the events that from the last two weeks affect a lot when it comes to the results we will get in November. So to begin with, we're going to start by filling in our safe states for the Democratic Party, states that they will win or I expect them to win according to my forecast, um, according to experts forecast and polling data by over 15%. So overall, a lot of these Democratic states, I would say, are they're currently safe because one, either they have won uh, a very, very big Democratic DNA, they've been voting Democratic for years, in addition to the fact that a lot of these states one, don't really like Trump. So a lot of the voters that maybe could have flipped and still be going for the Democrats, that's not happening. Like something that's happening similarly to the Republicans in a lot of the red states where they're losing support. That's not going to happen with the Democrats for the most part. As well as the death of RBG is really pushing Democrats, even in the safest of blue states, to go out and vote. RBG's death in essentially a month and a half before the election is truly going to have an impact. And again, we saw this conversation similar to the one we had in 2016 with um, the death of Antonin Scalia. And at this point in time, we're going to see a very contested election in part due because of RBG's death. This election was always going to be contested, but that's another hot issue that's going to come on the table if the Trump administration should nominate and replace uh, the, the a new SCOTUS judge, and or if it's if it's for waiting for the next administration, if there is anyone. So those things are solidifying these blue seats, and the Democrats are having a very good um campaign in these states. They're not losing much support in these areas. However, going on to the Republican safe states. These states are states that are, a lot of them are on the breaking ice, not even being safe. A lot of their safe states that they were expected to win by 15% or more, they're going into the likely column where they're going to be winning it by at least 5%, um, but less than 15 because the Republicans are losing support. So if you look at their safe states, states like Idaho, Utah, um, Wyoming, states like North Dakota, South Dakota, um, Nebraska's um, at large first and third district. A lot of these states are states that truly have always voted Republican. And the states that I would say are no longer in the safe Republican column, a lot of these states in part are becoming this way because the Republicans are just becoming a little bit um, less, um, less popular in these places. And at the end of the day, the Republicans are losing support. There are some states like Indiana where you could say maybe they could fall in the likely column, but since Mike Pence is from here and he does have a connection with those voters, I would say that they will still win by a safe margin. However, everything else is up for grabs in the election. If it's filled in the um, gray color, it means it's a battleground state. These states are going to be the deciding factors when it comes to the election. And as we can see, the Republican Party is far behind when it comes to electoral votes. Just out of the safe margins, 94 electoral votes for the Republicans, 190 for the Democrats, over double the Democrats have going into um, the, the toss-up states. So that's a very big advantage they have. They only have to pick up a couple of states. So what would those states be and who will win the election? We're going to look at this right now as we go into the likely states or states that I expect either party to win by from 5 to 15%. So at this point, let's start off with the Republicans for the likely states. They have a lot of these because a lot of these are states that have very solid Republican DNA. But either a couple of things are definitely happening. They're losing support because Trump is so unpopular. Um, they find the Republicans being radicalized. Those are the two biggest things. And also that there is a lot of Democratic enthusiasm, especially for a Democratic moderate like Joe Biden. Because at the end of the day, um, a lot of Americans perceive Biden as a moderate status quo politician that is truly what many americans want at this point because this pandemic has really changed the game when it comes to politics 
getting things done and all these different things. So what is one big trend we're seeing here? These are all states that one have had or will have um, competitive races in the Senate as well because we saw Kansas, Missouri is a governor's race, South Carolina, Montana, Alaska. That's one big thing that we're seeing. But also, it's why are these races competitive, but both at a presidential and um, down ballot races? The Republican Party is losing support. In some cases, like Alaska, it is because third party votes um, are going to tend to go to the Democrats. Because in this state, you have a very big amount of third party voters that would usually vote. In second Montana, it's mostly because they don't like Donald Trump as much. And in this state, we're seeing polls averaging on Donald Trump. And that's one big thing we're going to see. There's always going to be anti-whoever voters. That's a fact. However, for Trump, they're increased. However, one thing we must consider, but I'm not going to really put it too much into consideration in this video, is the silent voters, because that's a very tough group to analyze. So I'm going to make its own video for those, because they deserve their own video. But in a lot of these states, these can be safe. Um, if there was a quote-unquote silent voter, or like the um, Trump supporters like to call them, the silent majority. So in a lot of these states, that's what we're seeing. Republican DNA, strong states for the Republicans, they're just falling back. Kansas is another great example. Polling numbers only show Donald Trump ahead by 12%. Again, and we're having close races here. Missouri, again, we this state has been close in the past. In 2008, it was extremely close between Obama and McCain. However, at this point, Donald Trump should be able to win here. But the African-American and minority populations in areas like St. Louis and Kansas City should be able to um, push it into the Republicans' column by at least a likely margin. So those are all the um, red states that are in the likely column at this time. What about the likely Democratic states? At this point in time, the Democrats have a huge list of likely Democratic states, which include the state of Nevada, Colorado, Virginia, New Hampshire, and at this point, you could say states like Minnesota and Wisconsin or Michigan. At this point, these are states that the Democratic Party are leading in polls. They're leading in a lot of data by over 5%. In addition, we're seeing a lot of Rust Bolt voters um, going back to the Democrats, especially in that area of the country. And in these places, I would expect the Democrats to win in the Rust Bolt, maybe around by six to uh, five, 5%. To like seven percent, and then in the other states, maybe in Colorado and Virginia, but more in the eight percent range, New Hampshire, eight percent range, and Nevada also going to be pretty close at five percent. These are all states where the Democrats have started to appeal more to these voters. In Virginia, we have a lot of suburban appeal for the Democrats. In Colorado, suburban appeal with Latino appeal, Nevada, Latino appeal, and in the Rust Belt, the Democratic Party has heavily been focusing on these states. We've seen Joe Biden start campaigning out of his basement. Like, instead of being in his basement, he's going out and actually campaigning. Where has he been focusing? It's these Rust Belt states that we're seeing um, Joe Biden going and focusing. And at this point in time, these states could all go by anywhere from 5 to 15%. But for the most part, they will go by a little bit less. And... At this point in time, Joe Biden is performing very well here. I think the states that on this map that are the likely for the Democrats, they're on the slippery slope right now, are Nevada, Minnesota, and Michigan, which could definitely narrow down after the debates and after these um, working class voters start deciding what they want for this election. Do they want to keep on going with Donald Trump or stay with Joe Biden? Um, so that's a thing that we're going to see. And for a lot of these independent voters, is it going to be maybe taking a risk for Trump and um, hoping that the COVID-19 gets better and then the economic growth could maybe go back to where it was, or going with Biden and being the status quo and just know that you have a politician that's been there for a long time and knows probably what he's doing in certain instances. There's both sides to both candidates. And at this point in time, independent voters in a lot of these states could essentially decide the election. And especially for Donald Trump, if Donald Trump's able to win, in any of these states that are currently um, likely Democratic, he probably will win the election. So after filling in all the likely states for this election, we currently have 125 electoral votes for the Republicans and 248 for the Democrats. So now that we filled in the likely states, let's move on to the lean states for this election. Let's start off with the Democratic lean states. At this point in time, the Democrats are performing very well in a couple of states. Arizona. Is one state they're performing very well. Wisconsin, 
Pennsylvania, um, as well as you could say Nebraska's second congressional district. These couple, these three states and one congressional district are very good for the Democrats right now. They're leading in polls in Nebraska by a little bit less, maybe one and a half percent. In um, Arizona, it's two percent. In the Rust Bowl, it's four to five percent. And these are all states that are going to be crucial tipping points. Donald Trump needs to win at least three of these, um, two of these states to win the election, considering he wins everything else that's not currently filled in. And that's going to be something important in the election. But when it comes to looking at the realistic shot of what's going to happen for this election, Joe Biden has an advantage. And we already see that with just these lean states, he has already reached the 290 electoral votes. Uh, he's surpassed the 270 electoral votes needed to win by reaching 290 electoral votes. In Arizona, it's the suburban vote that's doing it for Biden. These voters from Maricopa County especially are starting to come out for Biden. And of course, there's still probably going to be some Trump voters and an increase in Trump voters, especially down in the southern uh, part of the state compared to 2016. However, Maricopa County is a county has started to turn a lot more Democratic, and this state is probably going to go by 2%. In the Rust Belt, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania are in very similar places. A lot of these workers that used to work at factories have started to work again in factories. These manufacturer workers, we're seeing a lot of them turn back to Trump. I mean, 10,000 votes is a slim mar margin. Um, or 70,000 votes, like in some cases in the Midwest. However, I think those voters could be lost, but there could be gains er er somewhere else. However, we're seeing Biden constantly lead in polls by over 3.5%, which is a good number, I mean, for the state. That's almost, like, out of the margin of error. And Biden probably will win here by the lean margin if the election was held today. Last, Nebraska's second congressional district. This is a district where Joe Biden has started to perform somewhat better. Um, it's still going to be close. I think it's going to be on the lower side of the lean margins, probably falling around the area of 1.5%. However, I think that Joe Biden should be able to win here. So that is the states that are in the lean column for the Democratic Party. What about the lean states for the Republican Party, where they would win from anywhere from 1.5% to 5%. So at this point in time, we could see the states of Texas, states of Georgia, North Carolina, or not, not North Carolina, Ohio, and Iowa, as well as Maine's second congressional district, all currently fall under the lean Republican column. So at this point in time, these states are all states where Donald Trump has performed, I guess, worse than he did in 2016. However, he's still in the lead. Texas, the margin is narrowing down. Polling averages as of today have them up um, by 0.7%. That is absolutely nothing when it comes to politics. And I think at this point in time, if Trump doesn't start campaigning more in Texas, getting his Texas base excited might be game over. And once the Democrats um, win Texas, over for the Republican Party. And at this point in time, they're doing pretty well in the state of Texas. So that's something worrying for the Republican Party. In Georgia, we're seeing the Democrats increase their support, especially amongst the suburbs of Atlanta. And again, if those areas go massively for Biden, again, game over in Texas or in, in Georgia for Trump. And that's a, lot, a big trend that we're seeing. A lot of these states that have solid Republican DNA are starting to go on and vote for the Democrats or trending towards the Democrats, which truly is becoming a problem for the um, Republican Party. Same thing in Iowa and Ohio. These states went to Donald Trump by 5% in 2016. At this point in time, we're currently seeing averages having about him up by 1, in, 1 to 2%. So at this point in time, these states are definitely in the room of possibility of flipping, especially Texas and Georgia. However, since they have Republican history, adding that to what a lot of experts believe, we currently would put these states down in the lean column for the Republican Party. Now going on to the last two states to be filled in for this presidential election prediction in the states of North Carolina and Florida, which will go by, I think right now, tilt margins or less than one and a half percent. Right now, the state of Florida, I think, is nearly going to President Trump. I think he's winning there by a margin of around less than one percent. He is narrowly winning here because his numbers amongst Latino statewide are very good. And as well as the biggest county for the Democrats where they get the biggest amount of votes he is, he has led in the last poll taken by um or he he's not leading but he's overperforming his 2016 numbers by 13% in a county of 1 million people voting. That is a very strong number for President Trump. That's 170,000 votes that Biden essentially has to make up elsewhere. 
Of course, he can definitely do it because there's areas of the state that are also trending against Trump. However, those numbers about Hispanics and the numbers in Miami-Dade County must be worrying for President Trump. And I think at this point, he might narrowly edge out, edge it out in the state of Florida. When it comes to the state of North Carolina, I think right now, Biden is narrowly leading and the support from the Senate race, that might also be translating and helping him a lot. But the Democrats have a lot of momentum in North Carolina. They have a popular governor. We have a very good candidate being run in the Senate race. All of that adds to Joe Biden as a candidate himself and Kamala Harris. In the state of North Carolina, the African-American vote is very, very crucial. And at this point in time, this is a state where we're seeing Democrats perform very well. And I think Biden could probably narrowly edge it out in this state. So overall, this was my 2020 presidential election prediction as of September 23rd, 2020. And things are changing constantly. This, this election prediction could change even tomorrow. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give me a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.